Happy August, everyone. August has now arrived, and if you're anything like me, this means that your clients have seemed to have gone away for a while. In fact, if you have clients or potential clients, or if you're located in, well, pretty much all of Europe, Latin America, and let's face it, you know, the US and August is just a month where not much happens. You know, it's a month where most of my clients, the people I deal with are in Switzerland and Italy. August 1st is Switzerland's national holiday. August 15th is Ferragosto in Italy, which is, you know, the biggest holiday and pretty much all of August, anyone. Anyway, everyone is going to the beach or they're going somewhere where they can get some sun anyway. So you're not gonna find anyone during August. Right now I'm in the States and it seems like it's sort of like that too. And I'm reminded because I'm dressed like this because I had a meeting today, but it's pretty much the only one I have scheduled for August. You know, this is a period where not much is going on. And so you might feel like, well, you know, or maybe you're frustrated because not much is going on. On the other hand, you're thinking, well, it's August, so I might as well take it easy, relax like everyone else is doing until September. Or you could not, I think you know where I'm going with this. So I've said it in a couple other videos. Let me just tell you my example and tell you what I do. August is a time for me to regroup and to start planning. August for me is when I can decide what I'm gonna start doing in September so I can hit the ground running. And so what I've been doing here, I'm in a new city, so I'm you know exploring and not knowing what's going on. So if you're in a place that you know well, then it's even better. What you can start doing is looking to see what will be going on in, well, you know, basically any time after August. It's a great time to schedule meetings. I've been looking up at conferences going on that I can attend and, uh, you know, where my clients are likely to be, meetups and internations, stuff like that. Chambers of Commerce, uh, you know, here, like I'm looking at the European Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that, because you never know. I deal with financial translations, so I see what's going on in the finance world. Again, nothing's happening in August, but starting September, a lot will be happening. So right now I'm trying to, get in as many of these as I can, find as many of these as I can and trying to schedule all these meetings around here. Some of these are in different cities or I have to go somewhere, so I'm trying to see if I can schedule also other meetings with people, you know, while I'm in that area. Suffice it to say, this is a time when you should be trying to plan ahead. And the only reason I say this is because everyone else is relaxing. So this is your chance to actually get ahead of the competition. This is your chance to kind of be doing something while they're not and you can start seeing results because of this, right? Because you can relax like everyone else, but then you're gonna start over like everyone else. You know, you're gonna be basically in everyone else's shoes. And this kind of gives you a chance to go a step further ahead. So for me, it's a great time to plan all these meetings and these face-to-face -face meetings. Now, I've been asked a couple times if face-to-face -face meetings are necessary. Um, this could be because maybe you're in an area where there are no other people around or it's very hard to meet other people or it's very hard for you to go and meet other people. You don't have a car, there's not public transportation around, or maybe you really just don't like meeting people face-to-face. -face. So here's my advice for you. First of all, if you're not comfortable with it, go out and do it. I'm not comfortable with it. I hate, I, and, and I've hated it, you know, and I've tried to find all these other ways to get around it. At the end of the day, I figured, okay, it's one of those things that I have to conquer and I have to go. So for a while, what I would do, what I kind of still do, is every for every business card I get, I try to treat myself with something, right? So it could be anything you like, an extra glass of wine or an ice cream, but decide ahead of time, okay, I'm gonna treat myself for, yeah, every business card I get or every meeting, one-on-one -on -one meeting I can set up or anything along those lines just as a motivation to, to, to go to these meetings, to try to network a bit. You should really try to meet face to face. However, some of you still won't or can't because it's just physically impossible or your clients are, aren't around where you live or you're somewhere else. But you can still take this month to plan ahead. For example, once again, something that I'm doing is an email plan. I'm trying to target people I can try to do business with. Like I said, I'm in a new place, I'm in a new area. I don't really know what I'm gonna be targeting around here. So I have a set number of emails that I send. One is an introductory email and, um, and then a couple other emails that I send. Why do I do this? Why do I send a couple emails? Because I want to be a bit different. Unfortunately, a lot of people receive unsolicited emails. And I can say this as someone who's setting up a translation agency, I receive a ton of emails. Like every day I receive multiple emails from people saying, hey, I'm a Swedish to English translator, here's my CV. Hey, you know, I do great Russian to German translations, here's my CV, something like that. So my advice to you is, I mean, sure, you can do that. Basically there you're working the number. Someone needs your language combination soon enough, then they're gonna hire you. Unfortunately, 
everyone that comes to me, I, I respond to them and I like to have them in my database, but I don't have that many opportunities going on. And most, unless you're a huge agency that has all this stuff going on, you don't have that many opportunities. And let's face it, the huge agencies, they already have plenty of translators. So they're not looking for new translators. So it's very hard to get in the door that way and to differentiate yourself. And so what I've been trying to do is contact potential clients with something that can help them. Now I say this and I'm not sure exactly how to go about it as a freelance translator when you're targeting agencies, but try to put yourself in their shoes. I can tell you as an agency, I mean, yeah, you always want good translators, obviously. You want good, reliable, trustworthy translators who are very good at their job, but you also need them when you need them. There might be the best translator out there, a Swedish to German translator out there, but I can't use him or her, unfortunately, because you know, I have no need for that. What I always need and what I can always use is clients. Oh, actually, if you could contact an agency with a potential client, I mean, yeah, then they'll definitely be interested. I'm not saying you'll have a potential client, but maybe you can spot opportunities for them. Or you'd say, hey, look, these people haven't translated their website into any different languages. I can translate it from Swedish into English, but if you can find other translators to do the other languages, this could be a great opportunity for you. So how about we work together on this and we figure something out? Anyway, this is really just off the top of my head, but if you can contact translation agencies and you have something to offer them more than you're a great translator, if you can contact them with something else that you can offer as well, then that would be great. Another thing you could do is say, hey, I'm a great Swedish to English translator, but I work with this other French to English, a German to English, and Italian to English translator, and we work together. So if you need me, or if you need these other languages, we'll be happy to work with you. That also can be really attractive to a potential client. So anyway, just try to think outside the box, try to find ways, and this is the time to do it. Take August. Obviously don't bombard them with email after email after email because that never gets you anywhere. But something like that, just so you stand out so they remember you, would would probably be very good. And th anyway, that's just an idea, but this is a time to formulate a strategy like that. Take August to do that because this is a great time to do that. In essence, what I'm saying is that you take August to prepare so you can hit the ground running come September. This is either for face-to-face -face meetings, for email marketing, or for whatever you might have, just so you can keep going. Of course, you should not forget that jobs do happen in August, of course. So you should be on the lookout for potential jobs in August. One good thing is that you'll have less competition. Let's face it, most of the translators are out there with everyone else on the beach right now, or they're up in the countryside, or anyway, they're taking August off, they're taking it easy in August, they're relaxing, chillaxing, chilling out, doing whatever they do during this time. So you can kind of like get a leg up by actually keeping track of who needs translations and when. Also remember, people who need translations in August, they probably need it a bit more urgently than someone in, in September. If they need something done in August, it means they're in the office and they kind of need it done now. Obviously, this depends from the situation to situation, but chances are you're gonna have less competition and maybe you could even charge a bit more. And, or anyway, do that at your own risk. I, I don't know it, obviously it depends on a myriad of details, but August is a great time to keep an eye out for potential jobs, but also just for preparing so that come September you can get going. Like I said, I love what I do anyway, and so this to me is a great time to try different strategies, to try to, you know, experiment, oh, let's try this, like the email marketing strategy, the meeting face-to-face, -face, this, that, and the other, and I can formulate a whole precise plan, and then come September I can see if it works out or if it doesn't, and so it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, I uh, hope you find this useful, and I, I hope it's useful to me. I'll let you know how it works out for me, and... If you did find this useful, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, that always helps. And don't forget to subscribe because then you can receive more emails about freelancing, about freelance translation, straight to your computer, straight to your YouTube account, and hopefully you can find them helpful. I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.